Origin Code Academy. Our job is to get you one. Welcome to Origin Talks. I'm Jeff Winkler with Origin Code Academy, and this is Allison with Seed San Diego. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about Seed San Diego and its mission and why you guys chose San Diego? Sure. So Seed San Diego is a group of venture investors, and we set out to change the landscape of investing here locally, of early stage investing. And it's a group of five partners, and we invest our own capital and our own time. And um, we also invest uh, strategic value into the companies uh, that, we, that are portfolio companies. I started investing here in San Diego about four years ago, and I saw an immediate need for early stage capital. Basically, I came from New York, I worked at a venture fund there, and when I moved to San Diego, uh, I saw this kind of like Darth of, you know, we don't know who to go to because there's no early stage investors here. Right. And there were early stage investors, but a lot of them didn't, were not familiar with the startup phase. And so they were just bringing capital as opposed to capital as well as kind of strategic value. And so what we decided to do um, we were, the partners met actually through um, several investments. So we found that we were investing in the same companies and um, we were talking to the same companies and we were also not investing in the same companies. And so we decided, you know, this is a really inefficient system for both the investors but as well as the entrepreneurs because they would meet with each of us separately and we would kind of come to the same consensus more or less. And so we decided to kind of form Seed San Diego and say, okay, well, you could, we're going to be a one-stop shop. You can get all five of us for the price of one. Kind of like five sharks on the shark tank. Kind of, yeah, but we don't compete against each other, right. right? So when you guys are investing in a company, do you feel more comfortable when the founder is a technical co-founder or a non-technical co-founder? Or you really need both for you to, or maybe it doesn't matter. So if you're at the very beginning, then technical is okay because you're still trying to figure out you know, exactly what you're doing. Uh, I would say you've just really got to be aware not to over-engineer. The tendency that we see with technical co-founders is they have an idea in their mind and they run with it and they don't really realize that they need to validate it. Right. And so instead of continuing to iterate on the product, it's an iteration on, okay, Iterate. I mean, it's, it's the same kind of methods that we've heard a lot of people talk about, but I think that, that, that that's, the, um, that's the fear, at least firm from an investor standpoint, with the technical co-founder. And we see a lot of technical co-founders who come to us later you know, in their product life cycle, and they've, they've built a great product, but it's not really what the market needs. Right. And then they're frustrated because they're saying, well, you know, we've built this great thing, we just can't sell it. And so from our perspective, it's, there's a reason why you can't sell it, you right. know? Um, but actually, I would say, even with a business co-founder, sometimes they miss it as well. Because you get so excited about what you're doing, and you have such conviction in your idea, that you fail to kind of listen to your customer and say, well, they're actually the ones who are right, right? It's not my idea that's right, it's them. Um, so it kind of takes this humility, whether you're a business or a technical type of person. Okay. So here at Origin, we hear a lot of startup pitches because a lot of students want to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> so usually I screen through those with two questions. How are you guys going to make money and you can't say advertising? Yeah. And then who is your target demographic and you can't say everyone? Right. <laughs> so do you have like two or three screening questions that like kind of cut that short before they just have like any random idea per se? Yeah, well I mean I think how you're gonna make money, we ask a very similar question which is what's your business model? But I think the business model kind of also implies like user acquisition and um, customers, it depends on what, what sort of business they have. But um, what, is, what is the business model? Have you thought through all of these elements? Um, and in terms of your question about you know the who is your target demographic, um, that's a really good one as well. I mean, I think, I think the two that you have are, are really good ones. The sales come easily. And so we ask a lot about traction. 
um, and we try to understand if the company has a cohesive plan and is this actually the right way? Is it going to yield us you know, the best business results the quickest? Um, or is there a, another reason why you know, we may be going that direction? What's the best, worst pitch that you've heard? Oh, I'm going to talk about upcycle. OK. OK. So <laughs> okay, yeah. can I cuss on this or no? Oh, yeah. OK. So I will tell you, I've heard actually a complete shit pitch. <laughs> and it's, it's actually not, it, it's, it's not an exaggeration because this company is a fertilization company. Mm -hmm. And they use human poop yeah. to develop their fertilizer. And the the founder is I mean there there are so many jokes around this right yeah. so when we're being like introduced six, to this company like exactly right so when we're being introduced to this company it's like are you are you shitting me right I mean it's <laughs> like right so all of these things go through your head but we met with him and this guy is actually I mean he's got a shit together right like he <laughs> knows what he's doing and he is literally. I mean, he's harvesting or he's he's collecting human excrement and in his backyard he has, you know, <laughs> yeah, he's doing it in his backyard. Sorry. <laughs> and, and he's turning it into fertilizer that he claims is, you know, like three times more effective and, you know, much more healthier and much more environmentally friendly than current fertilizer. And he's gone so far that he's actually doing a collaboration with the city of Carlsbad. Wow. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, when you ask about the best worst pitch, yeah. like, it's actually great because this guy is a phenomenal entrepreneur. He's really scrappy. He's, you know, he believes in something. He comes from this background. Um, but it's kind, of, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, okay. I can't believe we're actually talking about this right now. This is real life. And then the diligence that goes into, OK, so how do you create this product? And how do you get all of the waste? And you know, I mean, it's, it's yeah. just really. <laughs> you want to know follow-up questions, but you don't ask. Exactly. But you have to ask, <laughs> yeah, because do, yes, how else do you understand the business? Right. So okay. there you go. That was a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> right. Well, that's it for today's episode. I want to thank you again for coming out, Allison. I appreciate it. It was fun. Ha, ha, ha.